One man, one mission to rid the world of chronic anxiety once and for all. The Anxiety Guy, Dennis Simsek, shares his personal transformation from living a life filled with overwhelming worry to becoming a full-fledged positivity machine. A leading authority in generalized anxiety, Dennis gets to the truth of your mental health challenges and sets you on a path to transforming each and every area of your life. Here he is, the one and only, The Anxiety Guy. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode number 32 of the Anxiety Guy podcast. I'm Dennis Simsek. I'll be your host today. Head over to anxietyexit.com and sign up for a one-on-one with me so we can start a personalized action plan for you to overcome your health anxiety as well. Visit our Facebook page and give it a like if you want all the updates on all the podcasts, blog posts, inspiration, anything like that. Anything you're looking for that's related to anxiety support, you'll find it on Facebook and you'll also find it on Instagram under Dennis Anxiety Guy. So with that said, let's get on to episode number 32 and episode number 32 is a heavy one. Today we're talking about the fear of death. Now, I I like to start these podcast episodes with, with a very relatable story, usually my own personal one. Uh, but I also, you know, like to talk about people that are are, are progressing and, and, and people that I'm working with as well, one-on-one. And, um, and the fear of death for me started to come to play. I started to become really conscious about it once I started to understand that I wasn't fearing my actual symptom. It wasn't the lump in the throat. It wasn't the headache. It wasn't the tingling in the arms that scared me. It was the actual result of what could possibly happen that was actually scaring the crap out of me. So it wasn't so much of taking care of the symptom because what I did during my six year struggle with health anxiety was I I had a symptom and I'd always take care of that symptom. I grew out of that fear. And next thing you know, another symptom would pop up that would catch my attention. And basically, I would just be extremely focused on that. Now, that whole cycle never helped me. I never got over my anxiety because of the way I was thinking, those patterns. And later on, I'm going to give you guys five extremely powerful tips in order for you to handle your fear of death the same way that I handled it. And we're going to do that later on the show. But what I want to do is dive a little bit deeper into what the fear of death is, why we have it, uh, why it's, you know, why it's on our minds every single day. Basically, for me, at least, it was it was a, a territory that was so unknown. When I was growing up with my family and friends, Rarely did we ever talk about what happens after death. You know, what happens? What's life like after death? Is there life? Where do we go? You know, what does our spirit do? You know, we never really talked about it. So it was something that was so out there and something that was so uncomfortable for me to think about that when the idea of death came around, I was really, I had no idea on how to handle it. And what I started to realize was, was that I really needed to understand where this was coming from and, and how I could manage it. How can I face it and how can I manage it? So what I did was I started to dive deep and I found a couple of different types of emotions that were driving the fear of death for me. So for you, it might be the same thing. The first thing that I myself, as well as other people out there, have of a concern around the idea of fear of death is the idea of guilt. So being guilty about what my children are going to be like after, you know, after my death, who's going to take care of them? How is how are they going to take care of the their money situations? You know, feeling guilty about death. Feeling guilty because now your family and friends and people that love you are are going through pain and and such. And and this was really important for me to understand because it was a big driving part of of why I was experiencing the fear of death on a daily basis. And the, the other one was the idea of anger. I was always angry. And you might feel the same way where you go, why me? You know, why us? Sorry, not why me, but why us as a society? Why do we have to deal with the fear of death? Uh, Why can't we be on this planet forever? 
you know, this, all this that I'm experiencing is all temporary. Uh, you know, I don't want to put myself out there and be too happy because I know it's going to end. I don't want to put myself in different situations and have beautiful experiences because I know one day it's going to end. So I don't want to get too excited. I don't want to hype myself up too much because in the end, life is a struggle in our minds, especially anxious minds and people who struggle with anxiety and such. So it's like, you know, why do I even bother? The fear of death is coming anyway. And and, and the fear of death constantly plays that cycle in your head. And, uh, and we also try to figure out what it, what it's going to be like, you know, what's it going to be like in that moment when I'm when I'm dying, you know, we're getting pretty heavy today, we're talking about a subject that not a lot of people talk about. But, um, but I want you guys to understand it's not just the symptoms that you're experiencing. It's not the fear of death. Oh, I have a fear of death. It's something underneath that. You know, if we if we talk about if we talk about an iceberg, for example, and we talk about the unconscious mind and the conscious mind. Think about an iceberg, and on the top of the iceberg, the very top is the conscious part, our conscious minds. And the three quarters of the way below that whole iceberg below is basically your unconscious mind. So the conscious stuff happens when you start to do something new, take up a new skill, you know, see something that's brand new, go to an event or whatever it is, and you consciously start to think and, 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 and time your actions in accordance with that new thing that you're experiencing. But the things that we do on a regular basis that are automatic comes from our unconscious mind. And, and those are the majority of the things, such as driving, such as this, the way we react to certain symptoms in our lives, the way we react to certain people, the way we react to uh, some kind of criticism. You know, it's all unconscious. It's all embedded in our minds. So when we talk about the idea of the fear of death, um, it's very, very unconscious, you know, fear of, we, I, I could come up with those three words to you and I could talk to you about it. And right away you have an idea of, whoa, you know, whoa, I, this is a scary area, you know, and, and the reason it's scary is because of blah, 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 you know, and those keys, when you start to handle those root areas of your fear of death, you're going to find that you're starting to become more comfortable with the idea, um, of death. And as 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 strange as that sounds, you know, even for me talking about it right now, you know, I, I I'm comfortable with it, guys. I, I, I I'm teaching you guys on how I overcame it as well as people I'm working with one on one. But I'll tell you something. It's it's never going to be perfect for me. You know, it's never going to be perfect for me. I'm always going to be uncomfortable talking about the idea because I become extremely sad. I become really sad about leaving my family. I become sad about leaving this beautiful planet. And and, and what I become really sad about is the idea of regretting, you know, some of the things I wanted to do or some of the things that I wanted to experience or some of the, 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 the new career goals that I had for myself that I never achieved or I never helped as many people as I could, you know, it's always going to be a sad, sad situation, you know, for us, because, you know, who wants to die in the end? Nobody, nobody wants to die. But through this episode, what we can start to do, guys, is we can start to become a bit less focused on the idea of these scary symptoms that we experience through health anxiety, we can become a bit more comfortable with the idea of the cycle of life, which is birth, progression through life and death. And uh, we can start to, you know, keep it outside of our, our little window of, of focus, and we can start to focus on new things and, and focus on the now rather than focusing on the future. So I just want you guys to understand that it's not easy. Okay, it's not easy. And this is something that just like any unconscious pattern that you're running that is fueling your fears, fueling your anxiety, it takes time. It really does. But when you decide, when you commit to the idea of changing a pattern, changing a thought process, when you start to take daily action in that direction, you know, everything becomes easier and you start to have some momentum and and you're going to find that 
life is becoming more fulfilling. Life is becoming easier because in the end, we make life so complicated. We try to be perfect in every area, every aspect of life, and nobody's perfect. You know, it's okay not to be okay. And so, you know, I want to dive a little bit deeper into this and 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 ex- and talk about the idea of people always waiting for something to happen. You know, there there's a certain time pressure, you know, and instead of living in the moment, we think, you know, we have to do this and we have to do that and we have to do this and I'm getting older and I better hurry up and blah blah blah. And next thing you know, you know, we don't get anything done. We don't experience the things we want to. We don't come up with those new hobbies that we always wanted to. We don't start that new sport that we always wanted to. And our goal is to break it down and and go, you know what? This week, what can I do? What's one thing I can do this week? And think about the pressure that takes off, take that that takes off of you. Instead of going, I got to do all these things quickly because I'm getting older and I'm, uh, you know, life is short. And you see all these quotes out there, life is short, do things now, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that's tough. Like it really is tough. And um, and the idea of, you know, going, I'm going to solve one thing this week. I'm going to partake in one thing that's new this week and see how that goes. And if I enjoy it, great. And if I don't, I'm going to let it go. And, uh, you know, and kind of breaking it down into more simpler solutions is really going to be important. And the I, the other thing is, is that a lot of people tend to unconsciously, again, unconsciously, um, want to, and this, I'm talking to the health anxiety people out there, the sufferers, you're so determined to catch a disease early. You know, you've had someone in your life that's had a disease or an illness and such, and, and it's become a grade three or a grade four cancer or tumor or whatever it may be. And the idea of if I constantly stay alert if I constantly check into my symptoms, if I constantly go to the doctor consistently or this or that or Google everything and really be aware and alert, then I'll be able to catch any kind of illness or disease early and that's going to help me live a longer life. Now, do you want to live a longer life or do you want to live a fulfilling life? You know, you can do both and you can decide today to do those things. And I know this podcast is helping a lot of people out there, but it's only going to help you when you actually take action, okay? Just sitting there and listening to something is good, you know, download this episode, listen to it a couple times, but it's time that you put into action some of the things that, you know, we're talking about here. So that idea of I better be alert in case my if it's cancer i'll be able to catch it early or whatever it is you know that idea tends to drive a lot of people you know up the wall and 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 next thing you know you're living in a world of constantly um, reacting to things rather than taking control before you know taking care of your nutrition giving back to yourself starting some new patterns starting some rituals so that in the future you don't have to deal with some of the D's, the diseases in your life. So that's really, really important that we touch up on that. Um, and and I'm, I'm really telling people out there to try different things. You know, overcoming the fear of death means that you need to focus on a daily basis on things in your, unco- in your conscious world out there so that you can stop focusing on the things in your internal world. And and I want to give you permission to try different things. To not be scared of failing. Be scared of regret. You know, when you're 60, 70, 80, 90 and and you're, you know, you you you're sick or whatever it may be. You're lying in your bed there hoping, you know, wishing that you could go back to this time right here that you're listening to this podcast and go why didn't I take action? Why didn't I do that thing I always wanted to do? Why did I fear the idea of failure so much? And that regret is going to be such a burden, not only on you, your family, your friends, everything, guys. So if you want to start yoga, do it. You know, doesn't matter what you look like, doesn't matter what kind of shape you're in, do it. If you want to get on a plane and visit that country that you always wanted to, I'm giving you permission to do that, to do it. Don't think about doing it. Do it. You know, 
And, and the best way to do it is, and you can look this up, and we have this on the End the Anxiety, Gu- End the Anxiety Program on anxietyexit.com. That program teaches you a thing called systematic desensitization. And you can look it up on Google. And it's a way for you to overcome some of those fears, such as fear of flying, fear of driving, whatever it may be, in a systematic way. So I truly suggest you start that systematic desensitization so that you can begin doing the things that you want to do comfortably, you know, and understand that change is good. Change really is good. If we live in a stale world, if we live in a comfortable world, again, we're going to be old and we're going to live with regret and and we're going to go, I just wish, I wish I could have done those things. And, and, and that's not the way I want you guys to live your life. Now, the five things that helped me, okay, that really helped me, one of them was the idea, and this comes from Buddhism. Buddha's right here if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah, I've I've gotten a lot of emails about this guy. Thanks for those, by the way. And people saying, hey, I love your Buddha guy next to you. Um, The idea in Buddhism is that uh, you become reincarnated. And, and, And just the idea of coming back after death, coming, living a different life, another life after death, kind of gave me the comfort of going, okay, this isn't the end all be all to, 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 to my life. You know, this isn't the only shot that I have in life. So the idea of reincarnation, if you think about it in that way, you're going to find that it takes a lot of pressure off of, oh, I got to do all these things now and, I, and all that pressure and stress and tension you put on yourself, right? So the, the idea of reincarnation really helped me The next one was, the second one was the idea of the natural cycle of life, you know, thinking of it in terms of when I came to this earth, you know, in that moment, I didn't fear, I didn't fear coming to this planet, you know, and when I leave this planet, I'm going to, I'm not going to fear it as well. And starting to run those kind of patterns in your, in your head are going to take that fear of death away slowly, gradually. And, and just think about the natural cycle of life. And that's the cycle of life, right? We're born, we progress through life, we, we have those experiences, and in the end, you know, we pass away, and, uh, and whatever will be, will be. So think about it in terms of this is the natural cycle of life, you know? I think about the fear of death, think, talking about you guys, and, and, and you're not the only ones out there. There's so many people out there that constantly, every single day, you have that in their minds, right? So understand that you're not alone when you're thinking these things. The third one is explore your spiritual side, guys. So um, a lot of people tend to live in a world of effect and not cause, and, um, and, and the idea of taking control of my life, and, and a lot of people live in a world of victim, you know, playing the victim playing the blame game, blaming things on others. But it's it's important to explore your spiritual side. And the best way to do that is just to take some time to sit and just to let your thoughts be, you know, focus on your breathing, sit in an area where you won't be disturbed, right? And, and, and you're going to find that you start to learn about yourself a lot when you start to tap into your spiritual side. And there's many different ways you guys can do that. Go on Google and, and, and research some of those ways. Number four for me was that I started to focus on my passion, right? So when, when you're focusing on a passion, for me, it's the anxiety guy. You know, I want to help people through the Facebook page, social media, through this podcast and such. And my passion is to give back as much as I can. I feel like I have gone through six, seven years of debilitating health anxiety that almost cost me my life, cost me my family, cost me relationships, cost me my careers. And and that is the reason why I'm able to sit here across you guys and to give you these messages today because it's coming from a sufferer. You know, you might be in the same shoes as me and, and you look at me, I've got I've got an amazing life now. Amazing. And you can do the same thing. You can. But follow your passion. What is your passion? Is there a creative side to you that you've always wanted to bring out as far as photography, you know, being artsy, whatever it may be? Follow that passion. Focus on it. You know, spend two, three, four, five hours a day on it. Get up early. Do it. You know, don't get up and and start playing the victim. Start blaming things and, 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 and blaming the world for why you're in this situation and such. Focus on your passion. And the fifth one 
final one was I started to use the fear of death to inspire and set timelines for the things that I desired. So what you can do is start to set some timelines. In six months time, I want to get to here. Even much shorter than that. In a, in a, by Thursday, I want to get to here. By, uh, by two years time, five years time, 10 years time, 20 years time. You know, I want these things in my life to start taking place. I want to make this much money. I want to inspire this many people. I want to start this new business. I want to do a YouTube channel, whatever it may be, right? So it's important that you understand the, 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 the goals of timelines. Setting timelines will really help you and drive your passion that much further guys so episode number 32 coming to a close a very very heavy subject fear of death i hope i've given you guys some insight as to how i was able to handle the fear of death and i'm doing my best guys and i know that you're doing your best we can only do as well as the resources that we have within us so i challenge you to continue to educate yourself through the Anxiety Guy posts on anxietyexit.com. Make sure to comment, guys. Let's start a community here. Let's start a a community of people that aren't scared of stepping outside their comfort zone. And we can do that through Facebook. I would love to hear your comments when I start posting stuff there. Rate and review this podcast if it's helping you guys because I want to hear from you guys. You know, how are you doing? How is everything going in your life? What's your story? How can you inspire other people? So anxietyexit.com. I'll see you guys in episode number 33. Thanks for joining me here. Have a wonderful day. See ya. 